Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Deck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting this Fire Elemental from Printed Obsession. These techniques can be used to paint any kind of miniature fire though. Whether it's a fireball in a wizard's hand, a flaming torch, or a dude like this entirely made out of fire. This particular Fire Elemental is sculpted by Printed Obsession and is available on My Mini Factory. I just want to walk you through my printing process really quickly here. I use Prusa Slicer to orient and create supports for my models. Even though I don't use a Prusa printer, I find that they have some of the best auto supports available, and it just really saves me a lot of headaches and time. So I've scaled the model down to 70% of its original size here, just to make it a little bit quicker to paint more than anything. I'm adding a small drainage hole to the bottom, this is going to be the area that faces the build plate. And that way when it's hollowed, I'm going to have just an area where I can drain that extra resin out of, and you don't end up with a solid chunk of resin. From there, I'm going to generate supports with the minimal points distance set to 2 millimeters. This just seems to be the sweet spot for me, and I've had no problems with it either being over-supported or under-supported so far using that setting. Your experience may vary, and it's probably going to be very model-specific, but for the miniatures I've been printing recently, it's been flawless. From there, I export the STL, including supports, and then bring that into Chitabox Slicer. With all the supports already built, all I have to do in Chitabox is lay out how many of these I want on my build plate, if there's any other miniatures I want to include as well, and slice it. The printer I'm sending the job to is an Anycubic Photon, and the resin I'm using is Elegoo Standard Blue. So here's the completed print off my Anycubic Photon. I'm just going to go ahead and clean the supports off pretty easily. Most of them are going to break away pretty nicely, but I just like to, you know, use an X-Acto and just lightly separate them from the model. They do cut quite easily. I'm using very, very little pressure here and just kind of snipping them away from the model. And then once a sort of like a critical mass of them are broken away, you can just kind of peel the rest off. Once that's done, I just trim up any of the little remainder bits of support that are left over, and I usually file the bottom of the model down just a little bit as well after some post curing, just to make sure it sits nice and level. So I've gone ahead and primed the entire model white. My next step here is going to be taking some P3 Mora white and working it into the deepest recesses, because those are the areas where a spray primer tends to miss a little bit, or even a brush on primer. You know, you get a little bit more of a shadow in those deeper recesses, and because we want that to actually be the brightest part of the model, I want to make sure I lay in some extra white, some really pure white, which Mora White is really good at doing, and just try and brighten those shadows up, which is really counterintuitive. So the problem with painting fire is that fire, of course, is A, always moving, and B, not really a solid thing. It's, you know, a visualization of energy. What we want to take away from it, though, are certain color cues. You know, a bright fire is almost pure white at its core, where it's kind of densest, and then it fades out through yellows into orange, and just kind of stops there. There's really nothing after the orange. The orange just is the last step. We often have this idea of fire being red, and you might want to include a little bit of red just sort of at the very, very tips because we want a little extra impact from a miniature, but in general, fire doesn't really include red. So the colors I'm going to be using here are P3 Mora White, Sulfuric Yellow, Cygnus Yellow, Hearth Fire, Inferno Orange, and then if I do pull out a red at the very, very end, it's going to be Kador Red Base. Now that might sound like a lot of steps, but if you want to cut it down, you can really just go down to these three. Jump from the white to the Cygnus yellow to the Inferno orange, and maybe do a little bit of blending in between those. But ultimately, you don't need all six colors, and in fact, we really won't be using the red much. I'm going to begin, as I said, just getting some of the white into the deepest recesses. So because all I'm doing right now is brightening up the white in the crevices, in you know, the deepest parts of the model, I'm not really worried about getting smooth, even coverage right now. It doesn't matter if it blends properly, stuff like that. It can be pretty chunky. Not chunky in that you want your paint to be thick, but chunky in that there doesn't, don't need to be like really smooth, clean edges to the work you're doing here. Now on this specific model, one of the deepest areas where I found I needed to work the most white in was kind of in behind the head. Because those large sort of horn structures that this guy has kind of shadow part of his shoulders and his shoulders also have these big licks of flame on themselves it creates this sort of divot in the model that primer just didn't quite get to evenly it's really just something to keep in mind you want to look for sort of your deepest areas and just really make sure they're a nice crisp white before you start 
Now, of course, this has the poor side effect of making the model not show up very well on camera. That'll improve as I start to work the yellows in. So now I'm working in some P3 sulfuric yellow, and the idea here is that I just want to leave the white in the deepest parts showing and make all the raised surfaces of the fire yellow. One thing to keep in mind, of course, is that the fire is a three-dimensional object, so when you're painting these licks of flames, make sure you kind of rotate them out and look at them from the back as well, because there will be you know, a back plane to each of these little bits of fire, and you don't really want that to be white, because they'll really stand out when you view the model from oblique angles. Now there's really not much to this step because we're basically going to be base coating almost the entire model and we're just leaving those white shadows as much sense as that makes, those white recesses, you know, exposed. Now I'm brushing on all these yellow areas by hand. You could actually dry brush this layer on, but still preserve a lot of the white underneath. Either way you want to go isn't really right or wrong, this is just my preference. Now because this is a fire elemental, it's a magical construct as opposed to a naturally occurring fire, so we can kind of assume there's some extra energy at play here, and so because of that I want the chest to feel like it's actually got some, you know, fire weight to it, so I'm going to leave some white recesses in the middle of the chest and probably some parts of the face as well. Even though the fire is technically thinner there, you know, it's not as heavy as it is across the base, so it probably would end up being a little bit more translucent, but again, because this is a magical construct of fire, we get to play with our expectations a little bit and kind of play with the weight of the fire in different spots. Now, similar to the chest, the hands are one of those areas where you may want to kind of play with, you know, the feel of the weight or the warmth of the fire because you may want the hands to feel, you know, much more, you know, hot and dangerous, like they're going to reach out and just really incinerate you as opposed to, you know, they should actually be one of the thinnest, you know, wispiest parts of the fire instead. Now, as I was painting this model, I started to get the impression that the claws on the ends of his hands would actually work really well as a solid physical threat instead. So what I decided to do, and it was something I decided after I started painting, so I didn't introduce the colors when I first started the tutorial, was paint them as if they were solidified magma. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a different approach than the rest of the miniature. And as a result, what I'm doing is actually letting the hands feel a little bit cooler than the rest of the fire. So you'll see I'm actually working more yellow in here and ignoring most of the white at this point. So now the head on an elemental is one of those other things that's obviously very magical in nature and you can do a lot playing with the warmth of the fire here, even changing the tone of it. If you want to you know, bring in sort of like a blue alcohol fire, this would be a really cool place to do it. Or you can have it either be really, really hot, you know, make it almost be pure white with just hints of yellow, or you go the other way, make it very, very cool and calm looking, you know, bring it into the, I mean, cool and calm in relation to a fire, so you know, start to take it into like the brighter oranges and the reds even. Uh, what I'm going to do here is kind of just keep the face in line with almost everything else and have these sort of fire horns coming off the back. They're going to fade almost to red. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in Cygnus Yellow. This is the punchier, sort of more vibrant yellow of the two, where Sulfuric Yellow is a little bit, you know, flat, a little bit whitish, a little bit pastel. This yellow, though, I'm only really going to bring in sort of towards the outer edge of all of these yellow areas we've already painted. You, know, you can see I'm really kind of keeping it towards the, the crest of each lick of flame and leaving probably about 50% of the sulfuric yellow where it is. Now I will say this is a much quicker step than the previous color. You know, the sulfuric yellow, because we painted almost the entire model with it but intentionally missed some areas, you know, it was a very time-intensive step. This is now much quicker. We're really just adding a splash of a brighter yellow on top of all the existing yellows. And because we're also building yellow on yellow, the colors build very quickly. You know, one coat is pretty much sufficient everywhere here to get this done. Whereas with the sulfuric yellow, there were definitely some places where I went over them two times just to make sure I covered the white up enough. So this is going to go fairly quick and it's going to make it feel much, not warmer because of course the warmest part is the white, but it's going to make it feel like a more dynamic full kind of flame now. Now having said that, you're not going to see a lot of visual difference between the Sulfuric Yellow and the Cygnus Yellow. They're pretty similar. One's just a little bit more saturated, whereas the Sulfuric Yellow is a little bit more pastel. But otherwise, they're very tonally similar. And that's why I say if you wanted to kind of simplify your process here, you could skip one or the other and not really see a big change in the output. 
As I get closer to these flame licks up on the shoulders and the head, I'm working more and more of this color in, kind of layering it over the sulfuric yellow as opposed to just using it as a bit of a highlight. And the reason for that is as we get further away from the base and kind of further away from the chest into these wispier bits of fire, I want them to feel a little bit thinner and a little bit cooler. Now, cooler is relative because, of course, we are painting fire, but what I mean is they don't have that intensity of, like, the white core of the flame. So with that done, I'm going to repeat the same process using P3 Hearthfire, and this is where we start to get into our orange tones. Hearthfire is a really wonderful color. It's just that perfect, really warm, fiery orange. And this is the color that's actually going to really sell the idea that this is fire and not some sort of yellow goop. You can see I'm working it kind of just in the outer tip of each of these licks of flames now. I'm kind of leaving a lot of the surface alone. Just really coming out to that sort of that crested edge and up towards you know, where the lick of flame is. And just working the color in there. Uh, we're down to maybe covering maybe 25% of the model with this color. Every successive color is quicker and quicker because they're covering less and less surface. But you can see now we're starting to really kind of get that warm fire feeling from this. Like I say, it just doesn't feel like a yellow spill. It starts to have, you know, shades of heat to it. And again, when you're painting one of these licks of flames, it's important to kind of rotate them all around. Be mindful that you paint both the front and back of that lick of flame because they are a three-dimensional object. They kind of fly away from the model. And if you only paint the front, the back might end up being either bright white or bright yellow. And it just won't feel right when it's kind of viewed obliquely and you see, you know, an angle where it's half orange and half white. So just, you know, give the model a little spin once in a while and just make sure things kind of line up correctly. So now I'm bringing that orange into the face. And what I'm doing is I'm leaving it whitest around the eyes. I want the eyes to kind of be like a focal point of power. And then everything around that kind of cools away from it. So that's how I've decided to interpret the face here. And it's going to be coolest up towards those sort of horns coming up off the top. I'm going to make them almost red at the ends. So next up I'm working with the P3 Inferno Orange. And I've just got a shop cloth here to blot some of the extra paint away because I don't want it to go on too thickly. So as I load the brush up I'm also just wiping away a little bit of it. Now, the Infernal Orange actually is a pretty big step from Hearthfire. And ideally, if I want nice, smooth transitions, I want a color between these two. What I'm actually going to end up doing is mixing just a little bit of Hearthfire into the Infernal Orange just to lighten it up a little bit. You can see I'm really, just at this point, focusing only on the Licks of Flame as the flame is cast away from the main body. That's the only part I'm interested in really making this, you know, very, very orange tone. So here I'm bringing the two colors together. I'm also bringing just a tiny, tiny bit of water into it there to make it a little bit thinner. And I'm going to use this to just glaze into those tips of the flame so that it's just a bit of a smoother transition. First, I'm going back to the couple flames I've already added this color to and then just kind of blending the transition between the existing hearth fire and the Inferno Orange. And then I'm just going to use this mix going forward for all the tips. So now I'm back to the head here, and I'm really focusing the orange towards the, you know, the large horn-like flicks of flame here, and then just kind of building a lot of contrast to help shape the face. I'm going to kind of bring it into what would basically be the cheekbones and the eyebrows, and a little bit of the jawline, even though I want his face to kind of feel really warm because I'm going to have those white eyes. It helps make the white eyes much more apparent if they're set against deeper tones. And the only deeper tones we have to work with are the oranges here, so that's what I'm going with. So I'm going to bring out a little bit of Kador Red base. I'm actually going to mix this about 50-50 with the Inferno Orange because I don't want a true red from it. What I'm going to use it for is just those same areas on the face. You know, the tips of the horns, the cheekbones, and the eyebrow ridge, really. That's about it. I just want to make those just a little bit cooler, and that's either to indicate they're further away from the main body of the fire, 
or just to help create contrast with the eyes. So at this point, the fire aspects are all done, and I want to work on the solidified magma feel of the claws. I'm going to begin with a base coat of P3 Coal Black. It's got a little bit of a blue tint to it, and against the fire, this makes it feel very cool. You know, it feels like that rock has cooled down, is no longer, you know, active magma or active lava, and kind of gives it a more solid feel compared to the rest of the piece. I'm also going to use the same color for the eyeballs, even though they're set inside of a pure white area, I'm going to get the eyes just a little bit of this coal black, and I'll highlight them up later and make them really feel like a presence on the model. So next up I'm going to be using a true black, in this case P3 Thamar black. I'm going to be using that for the back side of each of the claws, basically as they face into the fire elemental. And then using a series of different colors, basically Thamar black mixed with red, red and then red mixed with inferno orange. I'm going to just transition the colors from the coal black all the way back into the fire. So now I'm going to 50-50 mix the Kato red base and the Thamar black together, get a really deep, almost kind of like a blood clot color red. And I'm going to use that just adjacent to the black I just put down to help transition it back towards the fire colors. Because this is a magical construct, I want those claws to feel like they're kind of forming out of the fire. And so that's why having a nice smooth transition from, you know, the cooled down magma of the claw to the molten fire of the elemental itself really helps kind of sell that effect. So now I'm just taking some pure Kato red base and laying that in beside the 50-50 mix of the red and black. And then I'm going to go one step further with a 50-50 mix again of Kato Red Base and Inferno Orange, just to bring everything back to the flame colors. At this point too, you can take some oranges or some yellows that are already on your palette and just fix up any areas of the fingers or the hands that might still be either white primer or pure yellow. Because as you notice, as I was going, I basically just started ignoring the fingers once I decided what I was going to do with them. And that did lead to some little parts of the inside of the hands that were just kind of pure white primer by the end. Now I'm going to take a little dot of pure white and just add a small highlight to each of the eyes. It's just a small single dot, just kind of focused forward, sort of feels like a pupil, and just really makes them feel more like there's an intelligence behind them. So now I'm going to work through a series of grays, starting with Gravedigger Denim, just to add some highlights to the claws themselves. I'm really just using this in sort of short little straight lines just to focus on the, you know, the outer edge of the claws. Now keep in mind these claws were probably sculpted to be flame, but they work just as well as the idea of like a hardened magma construct. Next up I'm going to repeat that same highlight but using Trollblood base. This brings a little bit more of a blue tone into it as well. It's more blue than grey honestly. And that does start to make the claws really set apart from the flame by making them feel significantly cooler. So at this point, everything's basically done. The model's finished, but when I started looking at it, what I noticed is the white feels a little bit too prominent in a few areas, kind of up around the shoulders and in that front lower section as well. There's just too much of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just thin down a little bit of sulfuric yellow into a glaze and just work that into some of those deeper crevices. Not all of them. I still want some white on the model, but I just want to tone down just how much of it there is in a few spots. So you can see I just worked about 50-50 mix of sulfuric yellow and water together and I'm just, you know, lightly glazing it into these areas, letting it just tint the white. Everything else is already either sulfuric yellow or brighter, 
and really won't be affected whatsoever by doing this. It's really just the white that's going to pick up a little bit of color. And with that last final little correction there, this fire elemental is done. If you like this mini, you can go download and print it yourself from myminifactory.com. I've put a link to the direct model in the show notes. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.